Is that report number one, Education Children's Services, ISC? I now call on Councillor Mrs Tracy to move paragraph six. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would have liked to have um, given an introduction to this paper, um, as is normal, for those members of the chamber who haven't had the chance to actually read the whole paper. But I understand that our opposition members would rather that I didn't, so I will just yeah. formally move the paper. Yeah, thank you. There is an amendment to sections B, C and D of this paragraph under the overview and scrutiny procedure rules. I now call upon Councillor Speck to move and Councillor Gibbons to second the amendment. I move the amendment. I second it formally. Thank you. That's Councillor Tracy, but no. Where is the amendment? Yeah. It's now back. Who's going to? Councillor Gibbons? Councillor Gibbons to speak. The Councillor Carpenter is going to start. So sorry, I was told that Councillor Carpenter is going to start. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm glad to see that the uh, leader is in his place to uh, listen to this debate on this occasion. Uh, Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, I think that I did say in response to Councillor Belton's adjournment motion that there were serious matters to discuss. If Councillor Carpenter wants to continue to be flippant, then I am perfectly willing for this meeting to descend into chaos. That would not be in the interest of the, of the residents of the borough, and perhaps Councillor Carpenter want to reflect on his comment. I agree. Councillor Carpenter. Thank you. Madam Mayor, this debate uh, covers three papers. 11791, which proposes cuts of £2.2 .2 million in the policy development division, principally in services targeted at children under 11. Paper 11792, which proposes cuts of £1.5 million in children's specialist services targeted at children of all ages and £0.6 million in young people and learning targeted at children of secondary age. And finally, paper 11796, which proposes cuts of £0.3 million in the youth work service targeted at children of secondary age. A total of some £4.6 million in the financial year 2012-13. This represents a substantial proportion of the support that Wandsworth currently provides to the children of this borough. It is notable that few of the children affected by these £4.0 million worth of cuts will be entitled to vote at the next Wandsworth Borough Council elections. Let me first make it clear that on this side of the chamber we do not oppose making budgetary savings in principle. Indeed, we could support the substantial proportion of the proposed changes which do not affect the delivery of frontline services. It is for this reason that we have proposed a reasoned amendment to the three papers rather than outright opposition to them. However, it is clear that this complex series of proposals has been put forward to the Council without adequate consultation with the third party providers or the users of the service. As a result, the equality's impact assessments, including in the papers, are flawed, so exposing the Council to legal challenge should it resolve to proceed with the current proposals without further consideration that we are calling for. In a five-minute speech, I do not have the time to cover the vast panoply of individual cuts which add up to the £4.6 million, so I shall concentrate on one which is illustrative of the flawed approach adopted in these three papers. Earlier this evening, I presented a petition on behalf of the users of the Autumn Morning Group who are seeking retention of this provision. If you read paragraphs 9 to 12 of paper 11791, what appears to be a plausible case is made for closing the Autumn Morning Group and replacing it with provision at the nearby Fontley Way and Roehampton Lane centres. That's what I thought when I first read the paper. Then I went and talked to the users of the Autumn Morning Group they explain that the provision at the Autumn Morning Group was designed for parent and child, while the provision at Fontley Way and Roehampton Lane was focused on the child. Those of you who know the Autumn Activity Centre, and I know that, that includes the Cabinet member, as she was present when it was reopened after refurbishment a year ago, will know that it includes an extensive outdoor play area, including provision for young children, something that neither Fontley Way nor Roehampton Lane can match. Indeed, what is the sense of spending a lot of money on improving the provision at the Autumn Activity Centre only to lock the children out a year later? And we are not talking about saving a lot of money. 
some £28,000 a year for two part-time staff. If we brought in volunteers from the local community to help run the centre, as we have at the Lennox Youth Club, we could probably halve that to £14,000. But there has been no discussion of possible alternatives with the community. So I'd ask the Cabinet member to allow time for these alternatives to be considered. At a time when the government is providing additional funding for nursery provision in deprived areas such as the Orton Estate, it is perverse for ones with council to be withdrawing a service which is similarly targeted. I've concentrated on a provision in my ward of Roehampton, but I know that there are other provisions in many of your wards which are similarly affected by these proposals. So I'm asking you to vote for this amendment to allow time for consultation with third party providers and users. This will enable us to produce pro proposals which remain efficient in the use of resources, but are more effective in the provision of services. Madam Mayor, I conclude with a quotation from Mark. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I think it's, it's generally agreed by all of us in this chamber and outside as well that Wandsworth has a deservedly impressive reputation for delivering youth services in the borough. What we have before us with this paper is an opportunity to broaden the scope of those skills, experience and funding out to new groups and organisations that have not received the same support offered to existing recipients. There are many worthy embryonic and relatively new organisations in Wandsworth who quite rightly ask us why other well-established groups receiving funding for many years when there's none available for them. Often these new groups have sprung up in response to changing needs in our young community and can offer new and creative approaches to youth services. Surely our duty as a council is to provide funding to those groups which are in most need of help. We all know it's a competitive market out there with a myriad of organisations fighting for resources. And surely those groups are the ones which perhaps are just starting up or with a short track record who inevitably find it the hardest to access funding from any other source but ourselves. Uh, I do find it rather unfortunate that our admirably articulate young people have been, I feel, deliberately misled by the opposition as to the facts in this paper. Let's, let's just get a few of those facts straight. We're not actually closing down three youth clubs. For three large and successful clubs, we are reducing their staffing budget gradually until 2013. Now, these clubs, by the very nature of their success and achievements to date, will be extremely well placed over the coming years to take advantage of alternative funding, which is available in the marketplace. Now, in fact, if I were one of those organisations, I'd find the suggestion that this change in funding will inevitably lead to the total collapse of my group rather insulting to their skills and experience. Yes, it will be a difficult challenge, but not beyond their talents and resources and with our officers' very professional support and assistance. I've been to visit several of our youth organisations recently and have never ceased to be impressed by the amazing energy and commitment shown by staff and volunteers across the borough. The Keat Council is, is keen to support all those clubs to channel some of that energy into finding alternative funding. Indeed, many groups are already highly skilled in that area, and I'm sure we can encourage them to share their experience with others who may not be, have quite the same level of expertise. Officers, in fact, have already had an initial meeting with representatives from all of the Battersea Youth Clubs to begin help with this transition process. In addition to which, a, a £200,000 transition fund is available to help these existing organisations bridge the gap to new models of funding over that period. I have every expectation that all three of these organisations will continue to be successful and really worthy contributors to the positive development of the young people of Wandsworth for many years to come. Most of the funds released by these changes will be reinvested in a new community grant scheme which will be open to all voluntary groups to apply for. If the Youth Opportunity Fund is included as well, there could be as much as £275,000 available to support a, a really wide variety of youth work across the borough. The Council's ongoing investment in the five bigger, brighter centres around the borough continues to provide outstanding resources for many young people, and it's something that will undoubtedly only increase in its success. A further sum of over £80,000 has also been committed by the Council for the refurbishment of Roehampton Youth Club and BASE. 
Several voluntary agencies are showing interest in running those clubs in the near future, which will only build on the achievements at Lennox already in attracting amazing local voluntary support and a way forward. In these trying times, we're all aware that there are extremely limited funds at our disposal, and that's all the more reason why we must be seen to be fair to, it, to all in our efforts to use those resources to their greatest potential. We should not exclude new providers who may be well placed to offer specifically targeted services which would achieve the high standards of youth work we're proud to see in Wandsworth today. I urge all members to support the paper. Thank you. Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. Uh, let's look at some context for this. Uh, first of all, we have the national context. Uh, we have a government which is cutting deeply into public services and has a deep antipathy towards public service ethos. Um, the Labour's position is quite clear. These cuts are too far and they're too fast. Unfortunately, this council and other councils across the land are picking up the consequences of this um, terrible policy. We also have a local context. We have the Kingham Report. Um, which highlighted a number of areas in relation to this. First of all, um, one of the recommendations is that we seek to reduce the influence of gangs in areas where they operate. Another one was to give full support for the Family Recovery Project, and the Council is indeed putting some, some uh, finance into that. The third thing was to uh, encourage community engagement, particularly with ethnic and religious communities. And I think it's a matter of concern that uh, the Islamic Youth Club is one of those which will have its funding reduced here. I think we also need to remember um, some of the experiences that happen if we do not find things for young people to do. Um, in my ward, Gravney, a couple of years ago, we had a very sad case in which a, uh, an elderly man was uh, knocked to the pavement and died as a result of kids who for many years had been messing around in a rather silly and playful way but unfortunately stepped over a line, things became very serious, and a man lost his life as a result. I can't say for definite that an intervention in, with, with those children would have changed uh, that particular incident, but I think it's worth thinking about the fact that we must try and intervene as much as possible to make sure that young people have constructive things to do and don't end up doing things which are incredibly negative and damaging to them and their communities. On our side, we do accept that patterns of need may change and that new ways of delivery may be developed. But I think the idea that somehow we pit the existing organisations against new organisations which may come up is entirely counterproductive. Clearly, simply making a smaller cake and then telling everybody we're just going to divide it up into smaller pieces is not really where we should be going with the provision of youth services in this borough, particularly if we're taking the Kingham Report to heart. Of course, charities and volunteers play an important part in providing services, but we have to remember the other context we have is that many charities are now feeling increasing pressure. Overall, giving to charities in real terms is decreasing, and the absolute amount has stayed static. There's a real problem here. Um, it's going to become more and more difficult for these uh, organizations to raise money independently, and therefore, we need to make sure that support is there. Our suggestion is perhaps that we look to mutuals and co-ops. These are organizations which have a clear contractual relationship with the commissioner. They have stable staffing, terms and conditions of employment for those who work for them. There are good examples in Spain, Sweden and Italy of, of public services being provided by such organisations and there may be some very soon closer to home in Lambeth and I think we need to be picking up on this opportunity. It seems to me there is a big missed opportunity here. The, the small grants fund which um, is going to be made available to new organisations is actually being cut by this council despite all the trumpeting we've had about how great the opportunities are. It's gone down from 138 to 100,000 pounds. The fact is that there are going to be more providers trying to get uh, a slices of a much smaller cake from this council in times of economic hardship which are going to make it very difficult for anybody really to, to function with any certainty to the, in the medium to long term. We get nationally from David Cameron a promise to support families in deprivation and to protect frontline services. But will residents in Wandsworth, looking at the organisations and the activities which are affected, 
children looked after, uh, prevention of teenage pregnancy, youth clubs, connections and career advice, see these as sensible savings or damaging cuts into the very public services which the events of this summer uh, have shown us are absolutely vital to provide a coherent and cohesive fabric to our society. I think not.